Hi and welcome to Lincolnshire Fen Crafts Needle Felting Tutorials. Today we are going to learn to paint with wool. I have this gorgeous picture in front of me which is really simple to make, great project uh, for any ability even if you've never needle felted before. If you, um, all you need is a, a nice selection of wools, your choice of colours, if you are a member of the felt club then you may already have this wool bundle so you'll be working along with me from that but you don't need that just a nice selection of wools I've got mostly carded wools here and um, a, a few wool tops as well so scraps of wool is the is the thing that you need you don't need much of each it looks like there's a lot here but actually um, you're using very little wool to be honest so I've, I've just quickly showing you here, I've got this is sort of hung on a piece of driftwood and then this one is actually um, framed as you can see and then what I've done with that is I've actually got this coming out of the frame, I haven't got the, the glass is actually behind so um, I've got that just sort of coming out and over the frame and it gives it such a great 3D effect. Now I've called this North Sea Coast because I spent a lot of time on the North Sea coast. Um, my dad was from that area, so it's 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 not sort of um, golden beaches and tropical sands. It's it's you know kind of a, a, a seascape with attitude, really, which basically the North Sea has. So that's how I've I've kind of worked this. Is there's quite a lot sort of going on. I've got lots of lovely fibres here and some bead embellishments. So we'll get going. Pop those to one side. So the first thing you need is a base to felt on and that can be either a rice hessian mat with a topper. You do need a topper if you are going to use your rice hessian mat because it just protects it and um, it will last so so much longer if you've got a nice topper on there. This is one of my eco toppers, I'll pop the link for them down below but any piece of um, wool felt that you have is is fine. Um, another piece there, so anything you've got, as long as it's got a, a, an element of wool in it, you know a good amount of wool in it, um, you can felt on top of that. You probably use acrylic felt actually, I think acrylic felt would be alright but it's nice if you've got some uh, some wool in it, it just just seems to to hold better so um but then in, what a lot of you will have will be a piece of foam which is also perfect to work on so i'll i'll use i'll, I'll swap between the two and um and you can see how both work just as easily now this can be done with one needle one sort of standard felting needle that's um Sorry about the plaster, I had a, a bit of an argument with a, a kitchen knife and an onion so um, it looks a bit messy so I've put the plaster on, I haven't been stabbing myself. So you know that's quite a nice strong needle there we've got which is what you want, you don't want anything too bendy, too fine because um, you know you want to sort of get cracking on. If you want to speed up the process you can just tape a couple of needles together which is a really good idea. Um, and then if you have multi-tools and similar you can use those and then my favourite is the, um, the old punch tool which is the, uh, it's got seven needles in and it's really really super fast, really speeds up the process. So we'll start on the um, on the hessian mat and we'll sort of swap and I'll show you the different tools I'm using but really all you need is one needle or two um, if you want to speed it up you can um, take them together three whatever you don't actually need a multi-tool you can just tape your your needles together which is fine these are 38 gauge just a standard sort of medium felting needle and then to paint your wool onto a base we have here a nice piece of Shetland pre-felt but again any wool will do, any pre-felt will do or any felt will do. I like this because it's it's quite stretchy and it moves and it's not too thick as well so everything just sort of settles on it really really nicely. I'll just show you on the back here. So you can see here this is the back of the of the painting and that's the front, so you can see where it's all, all come through. Um, so I, I quite I love the Shetland pre-felt. It's 100% wool and perfect for pictures. And also, what you can do is you can actually dry felt, needle felt onto it, and then wet felt it. Or the opposite way around, you can wet felt onto it and then add 
needle felted embellishments so it's really really versatile. I've got a nice selection of wool here and I'll just grab a pen and you don't need any drawing skills at all to create this. I'm just going to move that out of the way again. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to section my uh, pre-felt into, into just sort of thirds um, and I think we'll we'll bring the first third and we'll bring that kind of down here and then put that straight and then we'll go across here so this area is going to be the sea and then this is going to be my sky here so you've got your sky, your sea and your sand and that's it, that's all you need to do you don't need to draw anything which is why this is it was a really really good project so what I'm going to do I'm going to start laying the base and I'm just going to work my way up so I'm going to start with the sand and as you can see on here we've got some different colors going on and some different textures just pop that there then maybe you can see as I'm working how it's being created so what I've got here, this is some um, wool top and it's not your tropical white sandy beach so we're going, we're going darker with this but if you, if you want to go um, really light then, then you know, feel free, use your own artistic interpretation because I'm going to be laying some lighter fibres on top so this is the base. So I'm just going to lay some thin fibres down different directions and what you can also do you can also fluff that up just to get all the fibers going in different directions and lay that down and we want to be right up to the edge here Okay, so if you've got just a single needle, that's fine, then you just start, and we're not going to overfelt this, we want a lot of texture in this, so that it, you get a sense of movement. And you see lines underneath, just use those as the guidelines. They're just there as a rough guide, don't be too precious about it. We've got some gaps there, but that's okay. So that's using a single needle. I've got two here. Again, that speeds up the process a little bit for you. And then because I'm doing a tutorial, I am going to um, go in with the, the punch needle. What you must keep doing though is periodically just pull your work away from the base and you can see where it's starting to come through underneath. So, turn the guard so it's working. You see how quickly that is actually starting to felt and we'll just pull that away got more fibers coming through and also if you've got like a multi-tool also very very good I might use this just because it's a bit quieter and you might start to get a little bit irritated by the noise and then you can just pull those edges over on the other side and that gives it that nice, neat edge. Do watch your fingers when you're doing this. And it doesn't want to be, you don't want really nice straight edges. You know, you want it to be, you know, it's, it's, it's painterly. So you don't want everything as straight as a ruler. 
I've got some gaps there but that's okay because we are going to cover those up and I haven't come right up to that line but that's okay as well I can I can move that up if I need to but there's going to be a lot of overlap happening um, as we move up so don't worry about that and you don't need um, a, a mat as big as your, your piece of work. You just move it around. I mean, not many people have a big piece of foam, but if you do have a big piece of foam, then that's, that's great. Just pop a little bit on there. So don't worry about these loose bits at the moment. We'll come back and we'll, we'll tidy all those up later. Just leave them there for now. So this is, is you know, sort of painting with wool in, in, in its sort of simplest form really um, which is kind of just how I like it and see how you can just use your your needle just to pull those fibres up so pull that away gently see how that's coming through the back now So that's looking quite good. That's the base started. Pop that there again. So you can see. So as you can see, this is we're aiming for something similar to this. And I think it looks nothing like at the moment, but it will. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start layering. So I've got this sort of much lighter, almost sandy, sort of mottled um, carded wool here. Carded wool just means it's 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 processed differently and it's brushed in different directions and the, the fibres are much shorter. So what we can do here is we're just going to start to lay the fibres over those patchy bits. And quite thin for now because we can build that up later on if we want to. But we don't want it flattening, we want to see some dimension in it and texture and I like, this is, um, I think this is a ooh, Corriedale carded wool. It's like a, a natural sort of shade. But you can see already how that's starting to change the appearance. And then I'm just going to use my single needle here. Just going to, and it doesn't need to be um, really over felted it's just going to hold remember these these are not toys they're not going to be handled or they shouldn't really be you know once you've you've made it and hung it obviously you can touch it and change it if you need to but it is it is a piece of art to be looked at Can you see how that different texture is coming in now? Much more like one of our British beaches. Um, I spent a lot of time visiting sort of uh, Bridlington, went to Bridlington Beach so many times. We were only about 12 miles when I was growing up from Bridlington, Filey, Scarborough, Um, the Humber, the whole area, there we go. So you can see that's really starting to come on now. Now if you wanted it even lighter, then you just add a few more bits and pieces. But what I'm going to do is later on I'm going to come back and I'm going to add a little bit of, of sort of height to it and dimension. As if you've got those undulations that you see on a sandy beach. But we'll do those to finish off. We're just going to lay this base for now. So that's, that's the sand done. Now we're going to do the sea. Um, so it's quite moody, the North Sea, quite often. It's not um, tropical waters. So I'm going to lay down quite a dark, sort of greeny, jadey colour. It's quite a moody colour, I think. So pull that off. And then 
we'll just start laying our fibres down. And again, with this, um, you know, have some patches showing because we're going to add some some different colours and textures. So it's always nice to have some light and shade. And what you can also do is you can actually blend. I've got a lighter colour here, much lighter green. So you can actually, if you wanted to, you could blend that out onto it. So you've got a nice subtle blending effect going on there. So I might as well lay those on while we're here. Whatever you're, lift that up, pop that underneath. And then you see you've got that nice shading going on there. However you want to do it, it's up to you. If you want tropical sandy beaches, then you, you do it that way. That's, you know, it's your project. This is just my take on a seascape because it reminds me when I was a lot younger and lots of sort of happy North Sea Coast memories. My dad was um, originally a whole lad and um, he, he used to love going back there and just wandering down by the old um, fish docks. You can't walk down there anymore, but you know, when my dad was alive, you could you could do that, and you know, sort of love to have a wander back. And it it really is beautiful along the um, along the marina and the old fish docks down there. It's absolutely beautiful. There's been so much work done as well. So we're just going to you know felt this gently down we don't want to flatten it because you can see already we've got this really nice sort of light and shade going on so I'll just go in with this, this here and we're just going to tap that down gently in fact I'm going to go in with just two actually so I don't over flatten it and then if you want, if you have the punch tool again, you can do the same there. This does reduce needle marks using the punch tool as well. I mean, it really, it is my go-to felting tool for, for flat pieces. And if you're doing, um, say you're making a hair and you're doing their big sort of ears, it's brilliant for, for really getting a nice, smooth, even finish. And again, even if we do flatten this out, we can come back and we're going to add, as you can see, we've got quite a lot going on there. So I'm not too worried about this, this sort of visible line here because we're going to overlap, we're going to have waves, we've got some fibres going over, so they're all going to be um, sort of spilling over. So I'm just speeding this up a bit and then I'll just I'll just put some over the edges so that when we come to finish it we haven't got any raw edges of the pre-felt underneath showing. We can just wrap that around. that gently off and as you can see those fibres are just catching not too much and then we'll just go over that just with a single needle just to really push those through so like I said before you just need one needle one needle is more than adequate especially when you're doing a picture that's it's not too big obviously if you if you're doing a much larger piece and then um, I did a smaller one here, as you can see, and it's um, it's great because, you know, I've just sat it in this frame. It looks really nice. And can you imagine that on a little card as well? You could actually do a card gift. So you could do it even smaller and put them on the front of cards and give them to sort of friends, family, whoever. Um, and they just make the loveliest gifts. And you can pick up frames really, really, you know, for 
few quid now these days. There we go. So that's our base for the C. And can you see as well, if you want to just sort of tease things around, you can use your needle as a tool. It just, it works really, really well. And your hands, your hands are also great, great tools. Never forget to use your hands, really important. Um, with felting as well, you know, you can manipulate the wool, you can firm things up, you can pull the wool away from the fabric. So there we go, that's our C done. So now we're going to move on to the sky. So that's quite a nice bright sky and I've done that because it gives it nice contrast between this this sort of dark, uh, these dark tooth, darker two thirds going on here. Just move that off there. As you say, you don't need a, a massive um, felting mat, just whatever you've got you can use. Now I've got some sort of, it's like a, it's a sky blue carded wool here, really nice. Um, you can use wool top, any, you can use wool tops, carded wool, anything you want for this. But these are what I've put in the um, the felt club, the, the pro, this is actually a project of the month at the moment. Um, and this is what has gone out to all my lovely felt club members. So if you are here um, and you are felting along with me, hello and thank you so much for all your support. Um, it is amazing that, and, and, and some of you are, uh, have been sort of with me for five years or more, which is, which is just brilliant. So I'm just, just breaking up these fibres and again, um, leaving some sort of gappy areas, it doesn't have to be fully covered, especially as it's the sky, um, you get a lot of, of white and, 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 you know, shade and blue and clouds coming through. And I think just actually what I'm going to do here, we might have some storm clouds just over in this corner. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop that on there. Don't know if this will work, but we'll see. Pop that there, just gently tack it on. And I'm going to pop it sort of under there and then does it want to come the other way with the blue on top? I think maybe if we we just bring it over here and then what I will probably do is maybe pop some white on it just to, to dull that grey. Because it's a bit stark at the moment so let's get that up to the corner there. Bring that blue over and what you could also do is you could you could actually lay just lay some blue over that which really tones it down. What you could use is you could use um a darker a darker blue there as well. That seems to be working okay, I'm okay with that. I may change it. So the sky is going to be flatter because it looks, you know, flatter, but but with a little texture. So as you can see, I'm just using one needle here, which is working perfectly fine. Just lay. I've got some white here, so. We can maybe just, you see how I'm just really pulling those threads, those um, fibres really, really, almost like a cobweb, so barely visible. And then I'm bringing that across that grey as well, which is, is helping that to blend in. That's looking a bit better. And maybe a few more over here. So just really pull out those fibres. Now this is where you really don't want to over felt. So I'm just going to just tack it down.
down gently. Just keep pulling that off periodically. Yeah, that's, that's looking okay. And then what I've got here as well, for, for some contrast, I've got some uh, silk and merino wool top. It's, and you see it's got a nice sort of shine to it. So I'm just, you don't need much. I'm just going to take a few wisps of that. I'm not going to do a sun or anything on this because it doesn't need it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see, just lay that on and just gently felt on. And that just adds a little more detail. And then you can tease that out. And then if you find that's too stark, you can go back. And again, you can just overlay some of the carded wool. You see how that's toning that down? Probably just a little bit there as well because we've got a bit of a, a sort of sharp point on the end there which we really don't want. This is all about texture and creating movement. bring that white over there so that grey is kind of barely it's there but it's it's not too stark that's looking better I'm a bit happier with that now a nice flat grey top wool grey top would um, would work quite quite nicely there as well there we go. It's almost like we've got clouds coming in here, sort of storm clouds on in the background there, threatening, which is um, typical of the uh, the North Sea coast. So can you see now how we've got those edges? Don't worry about those. We're going to we'll fold those over. So all we do here is we take our needle and we just bring those edges over. I don't want it too neat though. I mean if you're mounting it and putting it in a frame you, 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 you may want to, to neaten those edges but I quite like the sort of natural earthy feel of that. So there we go, can you see we've got our base laid down and it's looking pretty gorgeous already. So that's good, really pleased with that. So now it's time to start adding our texture and we will work from the bottom up again I think and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create those sort of undulations that you see in the sand and to do that I'm just going to put little pieces of this carded wool down and kind of fold it over so that it stays raised so you don't want the whole thing to to flatten you, you don't want to leave bits like so. And again, this is just how I am doing it. And again, there we've just got that little, you see, a little bit here. And not too much. It's just for a little bit of detail, maybe a little bit here. And can you see how I'm barely felting this? And also if you go in at a diagonal, you'll reduce those needle marks as well. And then you can tease it over. So we've got those little 
areas nicely popped on there and we're going to work on this C area here. So again it's nice and sort of choppy, there's quite a lot going on so I think we will start, we've got some nice, uh, we'll go back to that grey again and what I've got here is a nice sort of um, sort of grey blue denim -y kind of carded wool, it's, it's kind of mottled so we'll pop some of that on as well and again it's just to create a little bit more light and shade, we'll lay a few fibres on and sort of thin them out, just pop that on so it just holds and what you can also do is if you've got the grey and the the sort of blue there you can just blend those together with your fingers and just pop those on so it gives the impression that there's quite a lot going on here and we'll just go with the blue over the top there so again just tacking that on just to create some nice shading Okay, you can see here that this is quite quite textured and almost got a got appearance of the of the waves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that sort of deep green that we started with and I'm going to pop a little bit of grey in there as well. And I'm just going to sort of take a bit of that out, we don't want much. I'm just going to sort of give the impression of waves so we're we we're just kind of folding it in half and then just felting the base so it's just holding you see that's that's loose so what we're actually doing is we're going to just bring that sort of over and just just those ends and if we do that and maybe add a lighter green here so maybe just add a little bit of light green to that just pull it apart and kind of just fold it and then pop that maybe here and then just you see how that's hanging over like that, we'll just felt that underneath and then we'll bring that over and we're kind of going to just tease that wool over but we are going to add some more embellishments to that as well I don't want it too high but just to give give that impression of movement and we could also maybe just pop a little bit of colour there and then just just a small area put a bit of that blue grey in kind of just back here let me see that there we go and so we're keeping this nice and loose and again you can use your fingers just bring that over a little bit so we've almost got those sort of those you know the appearance of either rolling waves or you know we've got a, a, a choppy sea going on here if you wanted you could just sort of go down the middle you could split that in two it's quite abstract you know so you don't have to be precise it's whatever design you really want to choose I'm just looking we've got quite a light area here which is not really tying in with this bit here so I'm just going to pop a very thin layer over the top Do you see how that tones that down 
and it makes more sense now. Just use your needle there. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to pop a little bit of white on as well because obviously you would see that and I'm just going to bring that up over this kind of wave here. Again, just tack that gently on. Very, very thin, sort of sparse pieces. I mean, barely there. And in different directions as well, because again, that will give it that impression of movement. There we go. So that's that's that part done. Uh, sky I think we'll just leave alone because I'm quite happy with that as it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use what I have here and this is silk throasters waste and it is it's just glorious. I absolutely love this. I mean this is just going to give that wonderful impression of the sort of the the waves breaking along the shore as you can see here um also actually look really good as as fishing net if you decided to go with sort of bigger boats and you wanted to to do something there's so much you can do with it it, it can be used anywhere really but um so i'm just going to a pair of scissors a chunky pair here which are not very good but i'm just going to Spread that out, and the trick with this is to spread it out. So I'm just going to, can you see what I've done there? Just along that shoreline, because that's where the the waves would kind of be breaking. So I'm just gently tacking that on. Make that a bit broader there. And do you see why it didn't matter about this line that we had earlier? That's just move that's a bit confusing. And then you can just drag that down. And you could almost have a sort of a break in it there. So you've got the sort of sand visible here and bring that down. And then I have also got this lovely um, this plant dyed art yarn. Again, which will, if you've got the, the felt club box, it will be in there. But I'm just going to snip a little bit of that off. And I'm just going to... It's just for detail. Pop that along there. And see how getting this texture in now really brings it alive. Don't over felt it, you want it to be sitting quite sort of proud. And then we could have some of these waves just sort of these these crashing waves just sort of spilling over. And you will never get two two um pictures the same ever. It just won't happen. So it's it's this is the lovely thing about needle felting is when you're creating something like this, so it's always going to be different. And so I think we'll have a little bit more sort of going on here. bit more of the uh, the silk throasters waste just coming down here I think we'll thin it out there and then we'll have it just sort of building up 
yeah, keep that patch there and then just have this little section here. You're just really making it up as you go along and which what whatever feels right or whatever you like. Bring that over. I'm just going to tip that and blow off the uh, little bits of silk. And you can also get this silk and just very small areas. You could have that almost coming over the, with the wave and you can sort of s see how it's breaking along the shoreline. I'm hardly touching it on there but it won't actually fall off when you, you tip it, it will hold really well. So you can see how you've got it's it's really sort of come alive now. You can see how that's that's working really well. And then along the the beach here on this piece here I have uh, this is Teasdale Teasdale Locks, hand dyed Teasdale locks, absolutely lovely. So I think you know we really we really want some nice sort of texture going in um, here along the base. So I'm just going to felt that on, just tack it on gently. Again, you can move it as you do so. You could just felt one end on and then the other, or you can just go along gently and see how that just adds such a beautiful texture and dimension and we'll move that up there we can bring that you see that silk there we're just sort of bringing that over onto the sand and you can use as little or as much as you like, but I, I definitely think this is a case of less is more. Just, you know, specific areas, putting little embellishments in. I'm not going to put the beads on today, because we'll be here for a long time, but um, I've just popped some beads on wire as well here. And then all I've done is, I've just pulled a little bit of felt, wool, sorry, wool, over the, the ends, just to hold them in place. You don't need to sew anything. And then I've done exactly the same here with these beads and again it just it just adds more dimension so just raid your old your old jewelry box you know all those um if you're older like me you know you've got a box full of all those lovely sort of boho beads and bangles you used to wear well I still wear a lot of mine but I've got so so much sort of from from 20 years ago um, that I just tend to raid my my old jewellery and also charity shops are brilliant for um, really really cheap jewellery so as you can see there we go that's looking lovely so I really felt though that this needed a focus and I think you know these these little yachts in the distance and, and they've got that really sort of windswept look work really well and I'm just going to show you how to do that because it's so easy so we're just, I've also here, just so you can, I don't know if you can see, I've just done a little dark line across the horizon. You don't have to do this, but if you just want a little bit of separation, then you can just pop that, that line in there, just so it's, it's slightly different. So it sort of gives you an, an impression of, of the horizon and then if it's too much you can just tease some wool over the uh, over the top of it just really thin wisps and this is um, just like a denim navy blue dark blue wool top that I'm using there but any wool anything you can use anything don't worry about it so there we go we've kind of got this this sort of horizon line going on here then that's the thing with the silk thrusters waste is brilliant, but um, just make sure you pull all your little bits off or leave them on if you want. You can leave them on for detail. Um, so we've got this little um, yacht here, as you can see. 
I'll probably just do one just for time today and just take a little bit of white wool and just in the palm of your hand just pop it on like so it's not even shaped just you're going to sort of give an impression so I'll have it you know and then you can tease over those edges and then just pop it down at the back there and just tease that to a point just so it narrows at the back don't be too precious nice and straight there we go and that's it it's really all all you need and then for the sail again we're really going to create that shape while it's whilst it's on the uh, on the actual piece again less is more with the wool you can add more and just kind of roll in your hand and you see how you've got a little point there going on so we'll just really press down on that and then if you pop that on there and do it at an angle so you've got that sort of windswept look to it and just keep it slightly away from the boat and then can you see what I'm doing there yet just hold one end and just straighten it out use your needle and then you can really bring that sail up to a nice sort of sharp point there as big or as small as you like and because I've sort of angled it and you see it's really got that that feeling of movement and here as well if, it, if it's not quite sitting where it should be you can you can move that around you see it's, don't over felt it and play with that and then maybe a tiny piece of wool here that just represents maybe the rigging hold it with one hand and then just gently felt into place and it gives that nice impression and with this one I've added a couple more in the distance I sort of I've, I've made them smaller to give um, you know give that impression of, of moving away um, of perspective I've sat one just sort of on the horizon line there which is a little bit smaller so really you know it's entirely up to you how you do it but that is and pull this away comes away quite easily and then because you've used your topper you've protected your mat and again I just wanted to show you if you use the foam pop that on there it works exactly the same way single, single needle there so I'm not pressing that down so exactly the same way on a piece of foam so there you have it your needle felted picture um, if you've got some beads feel free to embellish it add whatever you like don't think I've missed anything on this I've got this fastened onto um, a little piece of driftwood and this is another sort of picture I did this one is um, sheep sort of in the in the rolling hills um, and again you can see the bead embellishments there which work really well and I've got some lovely purple wool there and I've even done some little French knots here which, which look really nice. So it's really simple and again if you're looking to make something that you want to stand up in a frame um, for a gift or to add to cards then this is just perfect and it doesn't take too long so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial I'll put links for the um, mats etc down below the wool you can find in my shop if you haven't got any wool um, so thanks so much 
for joining me and um, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.